Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Kicksville. Kicksville. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. <laughs> hey, the way we go, welcome to show number 2,821. Along with Steve the Throw Hill, <whistles> the Ted Smith, <whistles> Robin Fox, <laughs> and my cock. Montgomery! Reggie, are in the men's room. On <laughs> tap today, Ryan Castle's a drunken charge is into sit and spin now. Today, the 10 worst acts in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. The word gets offensive. Get ready to play profile this. Plus headlines, events from Shout of the Day, fun listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV Time with Tim. Click, clack. Drink it, it drunk. All right, here we go. Pennsylvania son beat 75-year-old mom over the head with a lightsaber. A Belgian singer announces a comeback and a rebirth of her career, mm-hmm. and then is found dead the next day by her neighbor. Nebraska woman with runny nose finds out it's just brain fluid instead. Thank God. Florida alligator causes a family of three to now be passed on and dead. And speaking of Florida, woman calls 911 when she runs out of beer. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, neighbors. Your neighbors, they are what they are. If you're lucky, they're cool. If you're not lucky, well... You're stuck with them anyway. In England, a couple got a note from their neighbors that read in part, quote, We're sick of seeing your big bum, big booms, big boobs, and little Willie. Willie means penis, Miles. They're sick of seeing his little penis. Okay. Uh, now, we'll share the details of this neighborly dispute coming up. Pretty entertaining. Uh, there's another neighborly dispute. This one's happening in Panama City, Florida, where one particular neighbor... Well, he keeps sneaking into another one's home and then leaving her sexy underwear. You see where the problem is. See, she comes home, there's a new pair of sexy underwear laying on the floor, and it's from the guy she never invited into her home. And then we go to St. Louis. Now, in St. Louis, in this case, the neighbors knew that their particular neighbor, he liked to ride his scooter while wearing his samurai sword on his back, but in spite of that... They were still kind of shocked when they found out that he used that same samurai sword to murder another man. He was covered in blood, in fact. Good times. And in Spokane, Washington, one neighbor sued another neighbor because that neighbor's cat kept peeing on his back porch to the point that the porch basically was was deemed unusable. That's how bad it got. We'll get to all these stories coming up, but obviously the point here. It's your neighbor. It's not always that you had a dispute. Sometimes you find out they're crazy, wanted by the law, cooking math. We don't know. Here is what we're asking today. What is the story about your neighbor? Be part of the big show call 844-999-OLA. You can like the Men's Room on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Men's Room Live. And send those emails to the Men's Room at mensroomlive.com. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. Hola, bitchola. You have entered the men's room. Hola, bitchola. And away we go. Welcome to show number 2,821. What a large and in charge program we have for you today as Ryan Castle, the drunk in charge. He will be into sit and spin. And today we get the 10 worst acts in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremonies. A few months back, they just got to airing them uh, not too long ago on HBO, the three-hour broadcast. I watched uh, a, a little of it the other night. I believe uh, Bon Jovi closed out the show. All right. As they got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Not uh, my favorite band, but they should be there. Uh, as did the Cars and the and the Moody Blues and, and, and a few others. The Moody they, Blues. They, yeah, yeah. And they inducted individual they songs. songs. They've got they a few had songs. Lights and White Satin. Uh, and there were like two more. Just a singer in a rock and roll band. They had a number of... But in spite of that, they still yeah, got inducted. Tuesday Afternoon, maybe, is one of the Again, yeah. I hear you. <laughs> 
But still, <laughs> well, still ironically enough, uh, yeah. Ryan Castle has the 10 worst acts in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame coming up with sit and spin and whatever the criteria is that they came up with to do this, whether it was influence in music or if you were a revolutionary act or there's all kinds of however the hell they came up with this. But either way, they've, they've broken it down and uh, they have for you the 10 worst acts in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And Ryan Castle's got that coming up with sit and spin. Now, today, the word is going to get offensive. We have stepped in this pile of of crap one time before. It is four everyday terms with very offensive origins. And one more thing, uh, we have the most common surnames in your state in the United States of America. Okay. So the most popular last names in the United States. Okay. Like by state, you're saying? By state. Okay. By each individual state. They have the three most popular names in any state. Okay, for an example, in Hawaii, any idea what the... Lee, most- L-I. Lee, L-E-E. Oh, it's L-E-E. Yeah, Lee. Damn it. Yeah, it is. It's number yeah. one, uh, followed by Wong and Kim. That yeah, makes those, sense. Those are the three most popular surnames in Alaska. We have them for all 50 states. Hawaii. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. Hawaii, not Alaska. Alaska. That's throwing Alaska, me for a loop in Alaska. I'm sorry, Alaska is a little bit odd, too. Alaska is uh, Williams and Johnson is very popular there huh. as well. So there's a couple <laughs> of states. Johnson's popular in Alaska. Yeah. Uh, New Mexico, it's... Uh, Garcia. Garcia is the second most popular. Yeah. Martinez, Ooh, Martinez, yeah. and uh, Chavez. Uh, uh, North- is it Chavez or Chavez? Chavez, I All guess right. probably. Uh, so there, are, yeah. Every state depends got some on different the sport. last names. What Boxing is Chavez. Uh-huh. Baseball is Chavez Ravine or whatever. Just See, depends on I where don't you like that because there, there was Ibanez. I, I think people just say it. Well, Ibanez. Well, no, caramel I, I, caramel. I did ask Ibanez and Ibanez, and so they made the point. I did not realize they said, "Look, if it's Latin, it's Ibanez." If it is Asian, I believe Japanese specifically, it's Ibanez. Yeah. Because there's like exactly. Ibanez guitar. And I'm like, but it's called Ibanez. They're like, but it's not Ibanez, it's Ibanez. I don't <laughs> freaking know. <laughs> Show today coming up in another round of Profile This. And today we're going to uh, talk about your neighbor. Our story quite, uh, or our question quite simply, what's the story about your neighbor? And we'll start with a story in uh, Spokane. Not the biggest deal, but it is a big deal. And it falls under the umbrella of a typical neighborly coral. Homeowner one is angry at homeowner, uh, homeowner two, whose cat is peeing on the back porch of the neighbor. What elevates the argument occurring in Spokane isn't just that the lawsuit was involved, but that it was sealed. The L.A. Times has the story in which homeowner number one happens to be a Spokane County Superior Court judge who alleged that his neighbor's cat wasn't deterred by the fence between the two homes and was making his back porch reek of urine and basically unusable. A Price cat hates you. Reportedly sought a restraining order against Jennifer Tanaka in order to restrain her cat, and that became the lawsuit, which has been settled, and the whole thing was sealed in November. Now, a UCLA law professor is trying to reverse that after learning about the case from Tanaka's lawyer. He tells the Times he found no justification for the sealing, which he sees out of step with the First Amendment. So a hearing on this motion to unseal the case records hit a roadblock when the judge who originally sealed them uh, recused himself uh, from uh, the conflict of interest with the attorney. Basically, the judge is saying this. He's presided over some of the most notorious murder cases in Spokane County in the past few years. He just didn't want his address out there. It has been settled. And, right, look, the cat kept coming over and peeing on the dude's porch. (laughs) And it was, I mean, cat pee is awful. It's it, the worst. It, you, there's nothing you can do about it. You cannot rinse it out. You, you can cannot. still notice it on a deck, though? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You man, can, if oh, it's, it's wood, like if it can soak into the surfaces. Remember when we first moved here, man? They moved us into this apartment building. As soon as you open the door, just reeked of cat pee. Yeah. And I guarantee, like, none of that was recent cat pee. That's however long that building's been there, however long they've allowed cats, whoever that first cat was that peed in that plate, like, you're still smelling that. It's the worst, man. Or even, like, a lot of uh, apartment rentals. They'd rather you have a dog than a cat. Just like, look, your dog might rip up the carpet, but you can replace the carpet. If the cat pees on, like, hardwood floors, man, that's... It, I dated a girl, and her sister gave her a couch. It was an awesome couch. It smelled like cat pee. But you could, yeah, you could tell the cat, their cat, their oh, cat had yeah, peed man. on it. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, right, it was impossible. Well, I just, I don't know, man. I, I had a friend who had a, uh, a couch like that. And by friend, I mean me. So I bought it at Goodwill. And it just, every time I, like, I had no money, I could afford this couch. It was ugly anyway. But every time he sat on it, I'm like, man, I know they've cleaned it and did all the stuff they got to do. But it reeks of mm-hmm. cat. And everyone thought I had a cat. Yeah. 
59-year-old Istro Sanchez was living in a trailer park outside of Panama City, Florida. The dream life. He's chubby with white hair and a big beard. And he was arrested last year for repeatedly, repeatedly breaking into his female neighbor's home and leaving her sexy underwear. Yes, a man who looks like Santa Claus was breaking into his neighbor's home and leaving sexy underwear. He left them in her car and on her porch, too. And he did it several times a day. For almost three months without being caught. Come on, man. He also left notes that said he was watching her. So the whole sees you when you're sleeping and knows when you're awake thing <laughs> makes sense now. <laughs> the woman's boyfriend eventually caught him in their kitchen last April and called the cops. Then they found three big bags in his trailer with a total of 90 pounds of women's underwear. It's not clear if he stole any of those, bought them all. No one knows. How much do you think the average pair of women's underwear I don't weighs, know. Right? I mean, it's... Not much. Maybe an ounce, maybe two ounces. I mean, you have 90 pounds of women's mm-hmm. underwear. A jury a lot uh, of just convicted him <laughs> on three counts of burglary and one count of aggravated stalking. He'll be sentenced this week and faces up to 40 years in prison, according to Northwest Florida Daily News. Our question, what is the story about your neighbor, 844-999-OLA? Hello, Tim. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hola. Hola. So I have actually a good story about my neighbor. Um, I hope you're listening, James. I don't know where you're at, bro, but wanted to thank you for this. So long story short, I think it was like 2011, I believe. I had just moved into a studio apartment, barely making ends meet. And um, something about my apartment complex was if you didn't have Wi-Fi, you were in like a black hole. So no service. So I couldn't afford Internet. So I decided to knock on my neighbor's door and I was like, hey, you know, I'm a young kid, could barely afford my bills. Do you think I could maybe like pay for half of your Internet if um, if you just give me your Wi-Fi password? And he was like, yeah, sure. Come on in. Let's talk. And I get in there and he's got like all of these computers um, like lined up and they're like hundred pounds. They're really ugly, gray computers. And I'm like, what the hell is going on here? And he's like, oh, I'm data mining. Have you heard of Bitcoin? And I was like, no, not at all. And keep in mind, this was like seven years ago. So long story short, uh, he kind of like gave me the spiel, told me what data mining was and all the stuff and got me to invest at the time like $500, which for me was a lot of money back sure. then. But he promised me that if I was patient, it would pay off. And my $500 Bitcoin investment back then when I sold last year turned into like a little over four mil. So thanks, James. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Are you there? Yeah. All right. So you made a five hundred dollar investment. You held on to it for what, six and a half years or so, and you made four million uh, getting rid of your Bitcoin. Yeah, five hundred dollars, not five hundred thousand. Yeah, five hundred dollars right, turned into four mil in seven years. And honestly, if I would have waited until like November of last year to sell when it hit like eighteen thousand, I would have made like more like eight mil. But I was you know what? No gonna one's going to play the did violin you, for did, you did on you, that one, now, man. Did you, now, when you got yeah. this. Now, let me ask you a question. Now, when you you got to pay taxes on this, right? Yeah, it was like over a million in taxes. It was like 1.4 or something like that. Okay. And then w- w- when you get the money, what do you do with it? Do you walk into like uh, Chase, Wells Fargo and go like, here, here's uh, two point you know, six million dollars. How, do, how does this work out? Do they transfer it into a regular account? What, what happens? We had to open a um, couple LLCs, and um, I definitely got an attorney to help me with all that. I really am not in charge of most of that stuff, but, yeah, I opened a couple new bank accounts. I bought my mom a house overseas because that's where she's living now. Oh, I thought you wanted to get and, rid of her. Uh, I'd do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I bought you a house. <laughs> it's in Algonia. Right. How about and you? I are you uh, a tattoos, and that's it. Are you, are you working still, or did you? Uh, were you working at the, before? No, I don't. I don't really work anymore. I just like taking long romantic walks to the bank. That's nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I bet you do. That's a great long line. romantic <laughs> walks to the bank. Yeah, just count money. Well, how long do you think this money can last you, legitimately? Well, I did my math, and what sucks is because I'm only 27, and if I like quote unquote retired and just didn't work anymore, I didn't try to pursue. Oh, man. You all should that, buy a new phone. All that money, and you get screwed All on the, that money, yeah, exactly. and that's the phone you got. I got a burner phone that works better than that, and I'm broke. I understand the point he was about to make, but I still wanted to, like, punch him through the phone, which I get what he's saying. Like, hey, man, 
I made this much money. That's a, that's a sizable chunk of cash. It's not going to last you nearly the rest of your life if you're 27. So he just says, you know, what sucks is, man, I'm 27. I understand the point. Like, I will have to get taken. Right, he's going to have to work. But the flip point. side of it is, do not tell me what sucks is that I'm 20, I'm a 27 year old millionaire. You, 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 you could, you, I might have to get a job. Because guess what? I was a 27 year old hundredaire and had to get a job. You play in the NFL for a couple of years and make that much money. I mean, God. I mean, the, I mean the other thing you got to keep in mind, though, too, is like, like seven years ago, it seemed insane. And you have for a guy with old computers trying to tell you something right. that no one knows anything about. Right. So, I mean, I think a lot of people can like either hit these opportunities or miss them. Like I have a friend that started a very well-known massive company. But at the time when he asked us for $500,000, that was so much money to me. I was just like, no. But you also don't know. Right. Like, you know, like, this is insane. So like, it's funny. And when how much hear- do you think that money would be worth now? Oh, it, it, it'd be like that. I mean, I don't know if it'd be four million, but <laughs> right, it'd be, so. you're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. But, but on the same token, like I was saying, like, so for that guy now, it sounds awesome, but it's sure. like, I bet that 500 bucks, like, I probably wouldn't have done it. Now, did any of your different... friends in, invest in that opportunity that you knew? Yes. They did. Yeah, but they already came from affluent families. Right. So, so the money, okay. right, so the they, money, the money was wasn't that big the, of right. a deal for them to put in. Okay. All right. Yeah, truly. But, but you know, but the, the difference is this. <laughs> I know who you're talking about and what the business was, but it's a business model that you can easily understand. It's you're just going into a competitive world with this guy. Like you're talking about something that technologically speaking, seven years ago, here's a dude with all these prehistoric computers lined up, which usually to me, that doesn't tell me they're doing anything good. Right, right? Exactly. Like, it, but what is going on in here? You're telling me to invest in something that at the time I've never even remotely heard of. Like, yeah. it's called Bitcoin. The hell is that? You say digital currency. And like, I could understand it in principle, but I'd be like, man, I'm not. I'm not giving you money for that. That seems you like to buy time. another one of the yeah. Commodore 64s over there, right? Like that, that wouldn't make any sense. And yeah, I totally anything that's new technology, I'd have whiffed on massively. What uh, and still do? What's uh, I what, still do? Yes, exactly. you are one hundred. What is, what is this? That's all right. Me and my one friend, we still laugh about that opportunity. Oh yeah, what's that? The business or the Bitcoin? No, no, no. The business the opportunity bu- we could have jumped in. Me and DB still laugh about it. Almost kind of. Bitterly. Bitterly laughing. <laughs> God, we screwed that one up. But I remember being like, he's an idiot. Why would we give him $500 for that? What was the business? Are you allowed to say? Yeah, Warby Parker. This massive uh, glass. Warby Parker? Glasses? That's where I get all my glasses from. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> all the time. I know, I know the, tells I, me about can I tell them you more about the story? The I, uh, when you buy a pair of glasses from them, they donate a pair of glasses to someone who needs a pair of glasses. Miles, I am well versed in the company. <laughs> Is that what you were I lived me? with the guy. You I, when t- you were telling me a long time ago, like, all the glasses are made in one place. <laughs> yes! Get there and say, all right! You're yes! the one who told us! Yes! 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 You told us this stuff! Yeah, we have no idea. He gave you Now he has retail stores everywhere. Yeah, they open up, like, all the time. We don't have to go through it. I, they're packed. Dan are well versed in the in company. I'm in the Well, it's done. Yeah, I was just in there the other day. <laughs> Actually, it's a great company, days. and I like the guy. Please buy his product. No, listen, <laughs> and, and I'm not kidding you, right? I got to wear glasses. Miles starts wearing glasses. Miles says, where do you get your glasses? We go back and forth. He goes, Mexico, I go Warby Parker. But a month later, he's like, dude, I found this place, Warby Parker. Like, and like mm. here's the price breakdown. I want to see you turn to like Castle on to like Anyone that will listen, if you need glasses, Miles instantly, dude, yeah. check out Warby Parker. Man, we could have said you'd help our buddy Ted get That's richer. Right, man. But no. Golly. Now it's like, hey, rub it into Ted. Go to wow. Warby Parker and wow. buy their glasses. That's, that would have been a huge deal. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. Jeez. But at the time, again, right? It's like, I'm only working part time in radio. Like, $500 was a massive amount. Where's, where's Warby now, your friend? <laughs> is he Parker, Warby or where's, Parker? I mean, does he even work? Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, all right. Is he hustling he or working? He lives in Connecticut, all right. Uh, he's got a big home in Connecticut. Yeah. He's, he commutes to New York to work? I, you know, I, yeah, they live that lifestyle. It, it worked out well. How's your new apartment that somebody stole the chair from? <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> I mean, ah, last night I had to shoot somebody off a no, patio. No, you didn't. I swear to God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Can you imagine? You, with Warby Parker, buddy, you'd have a bodyguard out there. We wouldn't be having this conversation. <laughs> Period. Be on a helipad drinking a martini. Oh, my God. Damn. All right. I didn't realize Wait, that was on. a company man. Wow. I thought it was that how other did you, one. How did you, did you grow up with him or what? The no, I just lived with him. Okay, all right. But that's what I was saying. Like, for that, but, and, like, the internet wasn't as popular, so sure. we were, like, you know, and I guess he was a neighbor because he lived upstairs. But, like, we we did, the idea that, anyway, it was bad call. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I'm, my God. 
Uh, give us a little history on Warby Park. Oh, and, and, and in 2016, the company announced plans to create an optical lab in New York to create and manufacture their glasses in house instead of paying external manufacturers. Man. That's right. Think about all that money. 4,000 square foot facility. They employed 130 people there just to make their glasses. On March 14, 2018, Warby Parker raised $75 million in funding, according to the stock exchange, making its total funding in the area of $300 million. Whoa. Golly, their donation program, they say it's one of the finest in the world. The company pays for the production of another pair of eyeglasses for the nonprofit organization Vision Spring. In turn, they sell glasses to consumers or companies in developing countries as a way to encourage entrepreneurship. Wow. <laughs> they are stand-up people. In June, Warby Parker announced that it had distributed one million pairs of eyeglasses to people in need. The carbon, the company also is 100% carbon neutral. That is a hell of a, of a friend. He's a good guy, man. They were? I mean, he is. What a business model. I know his wife. <laughs> She's probably, she probably is great right now, isn't she? Yeah, she was always she awesome. She goes to yoga. <laughs> I bet you she has an indoor yoga studio. She goes to Whole Foods. Oh, no, no, no. She owns She one. has her own thing that she runs. They're, I mean, they're those people. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Like, they could both probably retire, but they never would. Okay. She runs SpaceX. Wow. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I wonder who their neighbors now, granted, are. All this story you should keep in mind. I was making thirteen five thousand dollars a year in right. radio. Everybody else in the row house I lived yeah. with was going to John's, the Johns Hopkins Happen. University. Sure, right. sure. Where, where you can live in Connecticut. <laughs> what uh, What is the story about your neighbor or your roommate? 844-999-OLA. More of your calls coming up. You are listening to the Men's Room Radio Network. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Young couple, they were shocked to receive an angry letter from their neighbors, which claimed to be sick of seeing them stark naked. That's true. Karen and Jay Stone from Livington, Newcastle, were baffled by the nasty note, which comments on the sides of their body parts, supposedly seen by the writer, through their windows. The note even threatens the young couple with the police for being naked in their own home. The anonymous note reads, Would you please close your blinds when getting dressed or undressing? We are sick of seeing Big Bum, Big Boobs, and Little Willie, and we will report you both for <laughs> indecent exposure. Willie means penis, Miles. We're tired of his little penis. Signed, your neighbors. Karen, 33, told the Chronicle Live, I don't understand it. It's not like we've been parading around naked, just living normal life. It does feel really creepy. I feel like someone has been peeping. I'm considering putting a note over both of my windows saying, stop looking. Really, it's just a bit excessive. If they just knock on my door and said there was an issue with privacy, that would have been fine. Despite the threats, the couple see the funny side of the note, which has sparked some debate. The wife added, it's really strange. My husband got the notes. I was away, so he messaged it to me, and then I posted it on our Facebook group. I woke up to find it had about 15,000 comments in 24 hours, and I had to call to talk about it on an Australian breakfast show. It's really surreal. People have been suggesting how we should respond. We've had a few more outrageous suggestions. Some people were saying we should start doing a choreographed naked dance. We had quite the laugh. By the way, uh, this is a young, uh, attractive couple. If they were your neighbors and they were walking around naked, you know, I mean, your wife would enjoy it. You, you would enjoy what you're seeing, whoever it is. It would... sit by, sit, you know what? It would be like a Folgers commercial. Grab a cup of coffee, sit together, yeah. and stare at the naked neighbors. When you're checking that morning wood, <laughs> and you're not as awake as you should. What's the story about your neighbor, 844-999-OLA? A couple of comments here. It says, my husband and I, we moved into a new apartment recently, and our neighbor behind us welcomed us by putting their headboard through the wall into our bedroom. It took them weeks to fix, and they were still having sex with no wall. Our TV is now against the wall, and every night that they uh, have sex, they get a popular sitcom played very loudly to shut them up. They they had wow. sex so hard that it that came through the wall? Their headboard went through the wall into their apartment. How right? is that even possible? I, man, I don't know. And then, I mean, is the wall not why would you out? still have sex in the bed when, like, they... I mean, there's a hole in the wall. They just don't care, man. I mean, that's Damn. just not caring. Uh, let's see. My neighbor, which is my aunt, had 50 cats and a few raccoons in and around the house. They were, ooh, they were constantly pooping in my yard and popping the ring on my son's swimming pool. I made her get rid of most of the ones that I didn't run over. 
My mom's sister, which was her neighbor, had 100 cats in and around her house. She doesn't live there anymore. The house is condemned, and you can still smell them when you get close enough yeah, to either house. Yeah, and it's condemned. I mean, that's you can never do anything From with From cat it. pee. Right. Right? Oh, I it's, mean, it's... it's <clears throat> I've got a cat. It's brutal. It is. I mean, it, it is bad, man. And, well, your cat, I know your cat's a, a lunatic, and I don't feel like you did yourself any favors with the name. I'm just saying self-fulfilling. No, I've been calling, self- I've been calling him Stymie problem. the Cat uh, more and more. But you named him Dr. Gomez. And sometimes Dr. G. Dr. G. All right, I mean, sounds like a have. crazy person. He's got like three. See, that explains a lot of his problems. Does he manage to actually pee in the litter box? He does. He, he does. dragged him, even when his back legs weren't working because his hips were broken, <laughs> he drug himself in <laughs> and pissed sideways. Like, he <laughs> and he pissed on his side. And I was like, damn, cat. And he pooped on his side. It was amazing. I was like, dude, <laughs> wait a that's wait, wait. amazing. So he pulled himself with his front legs. He got hit by a car, right? All right. And they were going to put him down. All right, he both his back. Ba- Here back, comes Miles. Back, back, back legs are broken, and his and his uh, and his, <laughs> and his, and his, and his hip, hips are broken. Right, so I paid for the surgery, but he still couldn't walk. So he just kind of drugged himself around like a rickshaw, with like his front two uh, arms. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then <laughs> that's the opposite of a rickshaw. <laughs> yeah, well, it's backward rickshaw. <laughs> it's right. the, the rickshaw right, works exactly, in the back. Right, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, right. And then he just he needed a card probably. It probably helped him. But he would pull uh, himself. He just drag himself pops. along, right, and then just lay on his side and take a crap. Yeah. <laughs> I was. It was. I mean, I was like, God damn, it's crazy. <laughs> right. I was like, who poops on their side? Like, if you, if you ever, I, like I never he even has seen two him. broken I legs, know. man. I still. Hips. When's the last time you pooped on your side? <laughs> if I had two you know broken I mean? like, legs, if my hips right, were broken, I get that. I've just never I been there. That. I don't know anyone who's done that before. Do you? No, I haven't seen it. Like I can physically see it. Like he was, he was laying down. You know what I mean? It's crazy. Hola, the shenanigans continue on the Men's Room Radio Network.